I always say the fertility industry is so reactive. Like I really wish that it was a more proactive stance. Yeah. I wish your doctor would have said, oh, you want kids or you're trying. Let's order that AMH test themselves instead yes. of making you essentially do your own research and be like, what can I do? Let me totally. get a mail order test. Yep. For people who don't know, AMH, and I know you already know this because we've talked about it, yep. it's a measure of what we call your ovarian reserve or how many eggs you have remaining. It's really important for people to know that this test is just a one-time glimpse. It changes month to month. Yep. But I think one of the key things is having a low value can be a red flag mm -hmm. that something else is going on, yep. but it is not an end-all be-all. Although very often, especially the younger you are, if you get this diagnosis, it feels really overwhelming. How Absolutely. did how did you feel? I can only imagine it was worse because it came like in a PDF report or something yes. too. Yeah, the PDF report I remember said something like it I think it related my egg count to someone that was like 41 or 42. That's all I saw. So I'm like, my mom went into menopause in her mid-40s. I'm like, I got to hurry. <laughs> I'm like, what? A lot of urgency kind of like it really alarmed me. And then when I sat down with you, I remember it was virtually at first, you gave the whole concept of the vault. And yes. that is when it all really came together in my head and it gave me a little bit of peace. I'm like, okay. So my egg, I don't have no eggs. I have eggs left. My number was low, but it wasn't like end all Zero. be all. Right. Nope. Um, so I think what gave me peace to start the whole process was just talking to you and you sitting down and actually taking time to talk to me and teach me what it is and explore the options. Um, and I think it really clicked for me when we talked about family size. And that's when I felt validated to move forward with treatment. Even though we weren't at that year marker, I was like, well, we want multiple kids. Right. I don't know what the future holds. So a lot of peace came with information. I've seen a change of this in my field and something I've always been very passionate advocating for is this concept of what is your goal? And I know that, of yeah. course, it's like I want to have a baby, but really taking a moment to step back and think big picture. And as you alluded yeah. to, which we'll get to, goals can change. Yep. But it's important to think about if life is perfect or how do you envision it? What makes the most sense for you? Because yeah. if you do want multiple children and you're struggling to get pregnant with that first, yeah. what is going on? Is that impacting your long-term goal? But you'd be shocked to see how many fertility doctors never bring that up. Yeah. Or patients aren't informed enough to bring it up themselves. Mm -hmm. And you get so focused on one child and there may have been choices they would have made. Maybe they would have accelerated treatment right. or done something different that could have kept future children as a game plan Absolutely. as well. Yep. It wasn't just for, at that point, my first. It was for the ones to come after that. Did you yeah. tell anybody when you were in this part of the journey that you had low ovarian reserve, that you guys were trying to get pregnant and you were having infertility? Was this something that you and Nick, Nick just kept together or did you share this with other people? Yeah, it was interesting. Of course, our like close circle knew about it, like my mom and my sister and some close friends. But when we have social media platforms, and it is weird when it was so all-consuming for a year of our life, but it just felt like something that we didn't really want to share real time. Um, so yeah, I mean, I remember even talking to my mom and my sister, and they're like, we have no idea what AMH is. Like, things, information is so awesome that we have it, but at times it can be a little bit, you know, uh, anxiety inducing yeah. and you have all these numbers thrown at you um but yeah it is something that's really hard to deal with in silence but I think having a couple people that knew about it is what really got me through it I love that you didn't just tell nobody when I went through infertility I didn't tell anybody yeah and of course I'm older so it's a little bit different time yeah. but it was just my husband and I and I always think looking back in hindsight I didn't give those people in my life the opportunity to support me yeah. that I really could have used when we had pregnancy loss or we were struggling yep. and so I'm glad that you told your close circle of friends and yeah. that's what I always recommend to people like maybe don't go tell the whole world unless yeah. you feel comfortable because sure. some people are sharing their stories in real time mm -hmm. which is incredible yeah. but at some point at least tell your people who are close to you so that they yeah. can be there to support you because Absolutely. the testing can be confusing it's not always the easiest pathway. Yep. You're making decisions that feel like there's a lot of pressure on them. Even if I say, well, there's no right or wrong choice. Yeah. It feels like there's a lot of pressure yep. on each choice you make. Yeah. When you were kind of going through this, and I know you guys shared your story when you were on the other side of it, yeah. what was the response to that from the public? So many people raising their hands saying, me too, or I thought I was the only one, which that makes it all worth it, absolutely. Um, a lot of people always ask me, like, what's what's your advice for going, you know, through this 
season that I'm in, if someone's in the same boat. And I always say, I don't really have advice for you. I just want you to know that you're not alone. And sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes yeah. I didn't want all of this heavy advice. Well, because it's so important. You did so much. Yeah, and chances are you've probably tried everything. <laughs> you know, at that point, if you are seeking fertility treatments. So I think, yeah, just letting people know that they're not alone. And I think that, that was the biggest thing. Um, sometimes that's all you really need. When it came to ordering a fertility test online, yeah. right, to check your ovarian reserve, I have a love-hate relationship with direct-to-consumer testing. Yeah. On the pro, I think overall they're good yeah. because it's getting more information in people's hands. Yeah. And maybe if the medical system was set up to give that to people more proactively, yeah. they wouldn't need to do that. Yep. But I do think it's really hard to try to source that information yourself and then to be on the receiving end of it. Yeah. Do you have any advice for people if they are trying to maybe get information on their own? Maybe there's not a fertility doctor close to them or their OB is not super receptive yeah. about what they should do when they get that information or how to handle it or mentally process it. Yeah. So when I got the, it, I guess it was like a mail-in blood work, mm -hmm. um, I, for me, that felt like the next step after going to my OB. I was like, I don't want to go into a fertility clinic and be like, I don't really know if anything is off or broken. But so I, I, that was just a really good foundation for me. And that was like the basis of my knowledge and education. And the one that I used really did have really great educational resources that went along with it. Um, so that's always something that I've kind of pointed my friends towards that don't have access to an in-person clinic or don't want to go to that step yet. Um, that gave me a lot of empowerment to be like, OK, here, I have proof. And then that gave me the confidence to go in and really advocate for myself. And I feel yeah. like I knew the questions to ask. I knew the topics that I wanted to hit. So I do think it's a great resource um, and a great first step if you don't have that access to someone, you know, down the road. I think that's great. I yeah. always think the next step is to go get an appointment. And I think a lot of people think they have to have a reason to come see a fertility doctor, meaning I have to have been trying X amount of time or I have to have this problem. Yeah. And the truth is you can come to a fertility doctor, you can get testing at any time. Yep. You can always get it, even though you don't meet the criteria for infertility. And there are circumstances where you should go get seen earlier. And specifically, if your periods are irregular, if you're having difficulty with intercourse, or if you have any known tests that come back abnormal. Yep. So yep. yours was a low ovarian reserve test, but other people, maybe they're listening, they have endometriosis or they have PCOS. Yeah. You don't need to feel like you have to wait. There's this weird dynamic I see in patients sometimes feeling like, I don't want them to think I'm crazy for being seen so early. I, I don't want to be seen as this type of patient. Yeah. When in reality, we're proud of you for advocating for yourself. You're never wrong yeah. to get more information and to get more data. When it comes to ovarian reserve, I know I talk about it all the time, but I'd love for you to talk about what do you understand about it now, being on this side of things. Yeah, okay, well, again, your explanation of the vault completely was the perfect visual, and I've used that talking to friends so much. Um, but, yeah, I, I think when you see that red flag on the test, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, no, and then you, and it says egg count. I'm like, that's the worst result to have some, yeah. uh, an off number in. Um, but I think initially, like I told you before, I thought, oh, well, urgency like I need to think about how many kids we want I need to plan this all out is this impact my ability to get pregnant is this why I'm not getting pregnant I had so many questions but when you really talked about the vault and how you're born with the eggs and you can't get any more right that mm -hmm. number is only going to go down um it did you know kind of confirm my urgency that I was feeling but it led Nick and I to have some really serious great conversations about what we want our future to look like which if I didn't have access to that number I don't think we you ever would have had those conversations those. so that was huge um, but it gave me a lot of peace when you kind of explained to me that this doesn't mean you can't get pregnant we just have to talk about timeline. We have to think a little bit more in the future and there are so many options for you for future kids it just it gave the common word here, I feel like, is peace. Like, you just gave me so much peace. But that's what education and information does, and that's what all of your platforms are. So, yeah, AMH, having a low AMH, I get a lot of DMs being like, my AMH is this. What was your number? And I'm like, don't panic. Yeah. There are options. Just find the right person to help you and listen to you, and you can go from there. So important, right? It's not an end all. We have women with extremely low AMHs, literally that show up zero, wow. that still have eggs and still are able to have a child and to have response to treatment. I always say, what this is telling you is that you need to do something now. Doing something is getting data, having an appointment, having conversations, making decisions. Yeah. So by default of seeing somebody doing the test, you're doing those things. Yeah. It doesn't need to be a 
panic mode, although I think it's so normal because yeah. suddenly this thing that we've always envisioned, I'm going to be a mom, I'm going to yeah. have X number of children, yeah. it feels threatened. And yeah. you start looking at life as maybe this isn't going to happen Absolutely. for me. And I think there's not a left, enough talk always about that emotional side of the journey, how it might change your self-perception mm -hmm. of what you want your future to be Absolutely. and how that can feel. Mm -hmm.